What's going on everybody and welcome to your first Friday's video for the month of April. The year keeps chugging along and April showers are supposed to bring May flowers. What I think in Maryland this year, it is April monsoons, I guess are bringing May flowers because we have had nothing but rain for four or five days straight. I mean, it has been relentless. It has not let up. I think six or eight inches of rain has fallen here. It's really put a damper on a lot of uh, business and commerce. I know Chaz with the tree service, he uh, hasn't worked at all this week because of the rain and it's gonna take quite a while to dry out. So hopefully mother nature is getting all this out of her system early and we will have some pleasant weather coming here very soon. But today is gonna to be a little bit of a different video. You can see we're standing here in the garage and that's where this entire video is gonna take place simply because of the weather. Uh, not much work is getting done outside in the yard, uh, but this is gonna be a little bit different format today and a little bit of a tough subject to talk about. Stick around. All right, so I'm just going to take a seat on the stool here today and I'm going to chit chat with you all for a few minutes because like I said in the intro there, kind of a difficult topic to talk about, but it's something that I have been contemplating uh, basically for probably a little over a year now. And it has to do with pricing your firewood and when and how you know when it's time to adjust your prices. I'm going to give you eight points on why I think it's time for me to adjust my pricing and why I probably should have done it a little sooner. Uh, I'm going to go over these points. I'm going to give you my insight and my, my reasonings for doing the things that I'm doing. And I'm hopeful that some of you will give me some feedback uh, for those of you who have encountered this, not just in the firewood business, but in any uh, business or side hustle that you might be doing or have done in the past. When it comes time to make these choices, uh, it can be a little bit stressful. It can be a little bit, um, I don't even know what the word is, but it's, it definitely can be a time when you need to make big decisions and, and they're heavy decisions. So we'll start off with eight, uh, the first of the eight reasons why I'm going to be adjusting prices in the coming fall. And the first thing that I want to mention is that during my time, since I've been doing this hobby slash business now, small business, uh, I have, taking great pride in establishing myself as reliable, as trustworthy, and as someone who brings a quality product to all of my customers. Um, that's something that early on when I set my prices in the very beginning, nobody knew who I was, nobody knew what I was doing. Uh, people who knew me from my past career were like, wow, what a change. So much you're doing, this is like the total opposite end of the spectrum from what we've known you as. So I had to get my name out there. I had to get the quality of my product out there and I wanted to enter the, um, enter the market at a very competitive price. Um, and I probably set my prices too low in the beginning, but I haven't made a price adjustment in almost three years. Uh, last year I should have, and I thought about it, but I just couldn't pull the trigger and I just didn't do it. I, you build relationships with your customers and you have personal, personal relationships with them. You know about their families. They, they converse with you on social media and you get a somewhat of a personal connection with your customer. So it was kind of a tough choice for me to make and I just chose not to do it last year. However, during this time, during this time that I have not adjusted any prices, which is almost three years, we all know that inflation has dramatically impacted this country. Um, it's wreaked havoc almost on almost every commodity that we purchase. And overall inflation has gone up because of inflation. Everything has gone up an average of about 17%. Uh, food products, you know, at the grocery store, you really feel the impact of that. That food products are up almost 25% and fuel costs, in this, in this time period that we're talking about have gone up nearly 40%. So pretty big impact on the cost of doing business. Um, and a, a substantial impact for the smaller your business is, those little things make a much bigger difference. 
Um, but as the business has grown, I've, I have been incurring more operating costs. Uh, the big one is obviously, if you've been following along with the channel, then you know that I had to obtain general liability insurance and commercial auto insurance. As this thing has grown and I have two trailers now, I've got two trucks that I deliver firewood with, uh, these things have, have added uh, reasons for me to, be, I guess you would call it, become more legit and to protect myself and my family and my interests, uh, I had to obtain that insurance. Um, commercial auto insurance and general liability insurance, that's a pretty big bite that I had to take um, for this, what was supposed to be a hobby. Um, and these costs obviously need to be offset. The way I figured is if I sell 60 full cords of firewood per year and add in the cost of this insurance policy, um, I need to make about $60 extra per cord just to offset that to bring me back to neutral where I currently am. Um, so that's something that I definitely need to take into consideration and you know, something that I probably should have thought about sooner than now. But as word of mouth has spread um, about firewood at the furnace and about me and about the product that I deliver, uh, because everything has been word of mouth, I do very little or no advertising to sell my product. The, I guess you would call advertising, you know, YouTube and Facebook when I share my videos with those platforms, you could call that advertising, but I don't post ads on Marketplace. I don't post ads or hang signs up out along the road or anything like that. All of my business has been exclusively from word of mouth. And every year I sell out of all my available firewood by December 1st, sometimes even before Thanksgiving. Um, and then from December 1st or whenever that day is, all the way through the coldest months of the year, January and February, I field telephone calls and messages from people looking for firewood. And I have to, I have to make that, we have to have that conversation and I have to say, I'm sorry, but I am completely sold out of dry season firewood for this year. And it hurts me every time. Every time I have to tell a potential new customer that, it, it, it really bothers me. Um, so that is another factor why I, I think a price adjustment is maybe uh, due at this time is because I sell out so quickly every year. Uh, so those are just a few points and uh, I'm going to give you a couple other points right now. All right, so comparatively, I guess you would call it to my competition, I am on the low to average scale with my prices compared to other firewood sellers in the area. Uh, however, I believe I am above average on the quality of product that I deliver. So I have been competing with people selling a lesser product for about the same price that I am selling it for. Free delivery is still included up to 10 miles for every customer that I have who purchases firewood. And as prices have, have risen over the past few years, I have essentially been giving my customers discounts, uh, bringing them the same quality product at the same price, which has in turn been costing me more money. Uh, so you have to kind of evaluate from time to time how much, how much your time is worth. Um, you have to give yourself a fair wage and to account for the time and effort that it takes to process firewood. I've said this early on on the channel that you know a lot of people in the beginning would ask why firewood costs so much and it's not the wood that you're paying for, it is the time, effort, energy, and labor involved in making that log become firewood. Not to mention the way I do it, stacking it on pallets and, and allowing it to dry in my yard before I bring it to the, to the customer. So I've been charging $300 a cord now for over a couple years. And if you factor in the 17% overall inflation rise that we talked about earlier, um, if you factor that in, it works out to be about $51 a cord if I, if I added 17% of inflation to my current cost of firewood, which means if I factor that in that 
technically a quart of firewood should be $351 if you're using that 17% number. Uh, I haven't decided on what that change is going to be yet, but there is going to be an adjustment. Uh, changing prices is tough, especially when you have really good loyal customers like I talked, to, talked about there in the beginning. Uh, but if you're, in any, if you're in any kind of business, not just this one, you can't do this kind of work with the uh, end result being that you break even or sometimes even take a slight loss on, what you, on the work that you're doing. Uh, so the time has come for me to make a change. I hope that my existing customers, I know some of you watch the channel and I know some of you follow along, which I greatly, greatly appreciate. I hope that you can understand why this is happening now and rest assured that you will continue to receive the same quality product that I've been providing for you uh, since uh, you got your very first order of wood from me. And I've decided to put this video out now rather than later to give my uh, existing and potential new customers a little bit of a heads up. That way they can potentially budget for this in the coming fall. So I hope all of that made sense to you. Uh, it's kind of happening all across the board and I'm one of the complainers about inflation and I'm not going to get political on here. I'm not going to talk about any of that stuff, uh, even though we are in an election year, but I've seen it happening all around me. Everybody's every, all the prices are going up for everything. And I've tried not to have to participate in that. Uh, but as the business grows, like we talked about, and as my costs increase, unfortunately that's got to be passed along. Otherwise I am working for free or even less, but that's it for your first Friday's video. Let me know in the comments, any uh, thoughts or ideas that you have on, you know, any heartaches that you may have had in the past when you have to swallow pills like this and make these kinds of adjustments. I am no businessman. I was a career government, government worker. So doing this small business thing is kind of new territory for me. But as always, I appreciate you all being here and we will see you again next Wednesday. Have a great week.